fellow diamond painting addicts and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne and I'm here today for this week's Whip and Chat. I am going to be working on my hot air balloon uh, stained glass looking kit today. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I am trying out my new uh, cottage mills dot boxes to see how these work. Um, if you haven't seen those, I'll stick a link to the unboxing up there. Uh, I am using a pin I got on Amazon, one of my fancy French pins, a tray I got from Nix's Notions, and yeah, I'm just going to jump in. Uh, let me kind of get things arranged. This canvas has been a little weird, and I will not be linking it below because I can't find this anywhere anymore and I think I've discovered why. So I started working on this yesterday while I was doing some video editing and things and this section over here has O's on it and once I get everything kind of arranged I'll show you. Uh, I'll zoom in so you can see and uh, let me zoom in while I'm trying to Sorry, I'm trying not to make anybody sick here. Okay, so I'm sitting here doing the diamond painting and all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this big section of O. And I started looking and I can't find the O anywhere. I'm like, what is going on? So I finally was like, did I miss a color? Is something going on? Well, and I think this is the reason I can't find this canvas anywhere. This O is not on the schematic anywhere. Um, however, there is an O that is red, which is in the balloon. And I thought, okay, well, that's weird when I noticed that. Why would they have two symbols that are O, even though they're a different color? So I'm assuming at some point someone noticed that and the symbol got changed. The only symbol that does not appear anywhere on the canvas is this J. And since this J is pretty much the color of these O's, I'm going to assume that those O's should have been J's because that's the only thing I can figure out. <laughs> so yeah, it's been interesting. Okay, let me grab a seat and I will get started. Okay, let me start my timer, first of all, before I forget that. Okay, so yeah, it was interesting starting to work on this section because I was like, what is going on? I couldn't figure it out. And then once I finally figured it out, I was like, oh, okay, well, hmm, that must be why you can't buy it anymore. So, and I've been using these boxes. I will say what I do is I use my straightener on the end to pop them open because I was growing out my nails and had been painting them kind of all winter and the gel nail polish that I was using just did a real number on some of my nails. And so the thumbnail that I would normally use to open that has, um, really been not great. So um, I'm using the, the straightener in to open them. So anyway, uh, okay, let me dump some of these out and get started. So let me update you guys kind of on life around here. I am having a really hard time remembering. And that's funny. Now I'm wondering if these are resin drills. Ugh, what did I just do with that? That one had a hole on the top, which only happens, I thought, with resin. So, hmm, interesting. But oh, there it is. Let's see if I can get it on my finger so you guys can see it. See how it has a hole on the top of it? Interesting. I would have expected these to be acrylic drills based on what they are. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh, I'm having a really hard time remembering lately that 
Comparison is the thief of joy. And I literally have written it down somewhere where I see it every day. Because, you guys, it's so hard not to compare yourself to other people. I mean, it's so hard to do that just in general. But especially when you're like a YouTuber or, you know, anything on social media where you're kind of keeping track of metrics because you have to. Um, and, you know, just looking at other people and gosh, they have this many subscribers in this amount of time. And, you know, how did they get this many subscribers? And ultimately, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm on this journey for myself. And how fast or slow I go is what I want to do. It doesn't matter if somebody else gets there ahead of me. It doesn't matter if somebody is behind me um, because I'm not concerned with their journey. I'm concerned with mine. However, there are days when that's hard to remember. So I've really kind of been struggling with that and trying to just remind myself that, you know, even if we are doing the same things, you know, even if we both have diamond painting channels, you know, whatever it the case may be, comparing yourself to other people is not always helpful. Um, in fact, in most cases, I would argue that it is not helpful at all. I think it just steals your focus for one thing um, and makes you feel bad for kind of no reason, really. I think we have gotten so used to comparing everything. You know, we got to have so many likes, we've got to have so many shares, we've got to have so many thumbs up, we've got to have so many hearts, we've got to have so many whatever the case is that, you know, I think we all, some more than others, kind of fall into the trap of letting that kind of determine your worth in a lot of ways. And it really has nothing to do with it. I mean, I have good days and bad. I, that's true of everybody. And, you know, some days maybe what I did isn't the best, but what I did is the best I could do at the time. You know, I tell my kids that all the time that you know, I'm not asking them to achieve the impossible. I'm not demanding from them, like for instance, my son in college, I don't demand any grades from him. All I ask is that he tries his best. Now, I know as his mom and someone who's been around him his whole life that his best is generally A's. Um, but you know, I also know that some classes just are either really difficult, really boring, whatever. You know, sometimes you just don't like the professor, sometimes, you know, whatever it is. So what I ask is that he does his best. And he does. And I'm happy with that. If that means sometimes he gets a B instead of an A, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. As he likes to point out to me, C's get degrees not a response that I like. And he does it because he knows it gets a rise out of me, but he's not wrong. So yeah, I think I just have been struggling the last couple of weeks of with remembering that, you know, I need to focus on my journey, not other people's. Because I am, you know, where I am in my journey because of everything that has gone before. And that may be different for other people. So it doesn't do me any good to compare my journey to theirs because they're completely different. You know, that whole walk a mile in someone else's shoes. So, you know, it's really easy to get jealous, um, to get upset because other people are doing, you know, better than you are or whatever. And yeah, I just feel like it just doesn't do anything but steal my focus. And it actually makes everything else more difficult because, you know, you're focused on that instead of just doing your own thing. And I think that shows. Um, I, I think that, you know, sometimes almost the desperation that people feel is apparent. And I think that becomes a real turnoff. Um, in a lot of ways.
So yeah, so I've just spent the last week or so just trying to remember that, you know, I'm doing this at my own speed. I'm doing my own thing. What other people are or are not doing is really irrelevant to what I'm doing. And I'm just going to keep on keeping on. So yeah, there's my little, my little motivational speech for the week, I guess. So, uh, other than that life around my house, I have my big changes coming up. My oldest is apartment hunting. We think we may have found one. Um, we're still kind of trying to hammer out some of the details and while we're all ready <laughs> for her to kind of move out and be on her own, it's a lot harder than I had anticipated. Um, she's older than I was when I moved out. And I think that's just a, I think that's just, things are changing. And that's kind of how it goes these days. I don't know if that's because of the economy. I don't know if that's because of COVID. I don't know if that's just a gradual change that's kind of come on. But I know that a lot of kids, you know, kind of live with their parents longer than, than we used to. Oh, this canvas is making me crazy. So anyway, so that's kind of a big upheaval that's going to be happening here shortly. And while I'm, you know, in a lot of ways ready for her to move out and she is ready to move out, um, you know, that's still that part of me that's like, oh, man, I'm going to be like an empty nester, which is crazy. My son is still here, so I'm not going to be an empty nester, but it's just a big change and that's hard to get used to. So plus it's just, you know, a lot of busy work trying to get all of the details hammered out. And then, you know, she's never lived any bit where, but here. And so trying to figure out all the things that we all need to do to kind of get her set up to be her own household. Um, you know, just things that I haven't had to think about for years because I haven't set up a new house in years. Um, you know, from everything to buying like cleaning supplies, to buying towels, to curtains, to, you know, whatever. All those things that you need when you first move into an apartment. And I need to get my tweezers because I think those are stuck together and those are not going to sit the way that I want. So let me take those and put those off to the side. Okay. So yeah, it's been kind of crazy around here because of that. Um, I mean, everyone, I mean, I won't say everyone is excited. Her brother is excited for her to move out because he thinks that's going to give him more space, but I don't know that that's going to happen. Um, she's excited, of course, to move out and be on her own and have her own space and her own thing. Um, but finances are a question. And so that's been a struggle too, trying to figure it out so that she can do it on her own without too much assistance. And it's going to be a big change for her. You know, she's never lived anywhere but home. And so, yeah, just lots of changes going on in that respect. Um, my knee is better. I've made it past the two weeks and I'm really not in pain anymore. Um, and I have not been wearing my brace every day. It's been feeling that much better. However, there are certain days when I tweak it. I move just the wrong way and I, it's suddenly painful and then it is painful to walk on for a little bit and then it's fine again. Yesterday was weird because my husband and I actually went out and did some shopping and it kept giving out on me and it, not that it was sore, but just that I would be walking and suddenly it was like it would almost buckle under me. And the weird thing is one, it didn't really hurt. And two, if I kind of locked it in place and then walked, like tried to walk without bending my knee, then, then it was okay. Like it didn't hurt. So I have no idea what's going on. I just know I don't want to have to have surgery. So yeah, so that's where that's at. 
Um, let's see. Oh, I did want to mention YouTube is still eating comments. Don't know why, but it is. So if you made a comment and I don't respond to it again, 99% of the time it's because YouTube ate it. So I don't have a way to respond to it because I do try to respond to all of my comments, even if it's just to say, thanks for watching. But you know, I figure if someone went to all the trouble to make a comment, then the least that I could do is, you know, make some kind of response, whatever that may look like. So yeah, so if I don't, it's because YouTube ate your comment and I apologize, but there's not a whole lot I can do about that. So, weird string in there. Get that out of there and put that in the trash. That was weird. Okay. So, uh, and you guys, I have to make a confession. I thought I was doing so well with my budget this year. And then I got to looking at some of my goals and things and I was like, oh man, if I really want to make some of my goals, I'm going to have to spend some money because one of my goals, well, one of my goals is the big 10, which is that I want to try and do a kit from what I'm terming the big 10 companies. Now, whether they're actually the big 10 or I just feel like they're the big 10 is irrelevant to me. I'm, I'm, and I have nine of them picked out. I'm still debating what I want to term the, the 10th one. So I, I'm still not sure what number 10 is going to be, but I am sure that I'm still working on those. However, I don't have a kit from at least two of what I've termed the big 10. So I'm going to have to spend money to buy kits from them. And then one of my goals was that I wanted to try out 15 new to me diamond painting companies. And, you know, one of them I've already met, um, managed because I was contacted by diamond painting shop and asked if I would do an unboxing for her, which I did. And if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link up in the corner. It's a really cool painting um, of an Alphonse Mucha image. And I haven't done it yet, but I will be doing it. But it is a very large painting. And so I've, I'm doing some other things first. And also I have some events that I had already planned. So I will be doing those before I get to do that one. Anyway, so that's one company, but that still leaves me 14 companies that I need to experience. And I've looked at some and I just hadn't pulled the trigger. And then I happened to be on Etsy because I was looking for something and I don't even remember what I was looking for at the moment, but I was looking for something and I went by uh, one of the Etsy shops that sells diamond paintings. I've got two or three that are kind of on my list besides distracted, distracted by diamonds that I kind of watch every, you know, now and then I'll go in and check to see if they have any new diamond paintings. And I've had my eye on one that I thought would be cool, but I just hadn't pulled the trigger because I hadn't wanted to spend the money. Well, when I was looking yesterday, it happened to be on sale for like 40% off. So I went ahead and got it. And it is from Enablers Outpost and it is a stock image called Medusa that they licensed from, I think they said Shutterstock, one of those, you know, stock photo places. And I just couldn't pass it up because you know, by the time you add on shipping and sales tax, sometimes the paintings, especially when you're talking about Etsy, can get kind of expensive. And because it was on sale, I was able to basically, the discount for the sale covered what I was going to have to pay for uh, shipping and sales tax. So I ended up getting the kit for like, I think $47 or something like that. 
for everything, all inclusive. So that was just a deal I couldn't pass up. And it was an image I'd had my eye on for a while anyway. So I went ahead and bought it. And so far, I really haven't spent a whole lot. Um, I bought the Medusa. Oh, and then I was looking on Amazon for kits as well. Somebody, and I don't remember who, told me that uh, it might have been Tammy, Tammy or Jess, I can't remember, uh, said that Tin Me Arts has a store on Amazon. And so I wanted to go look on Amazon for some of their stuff. And while I was looking for theirs, I happened to see that there was a store and I just missed two of those. So let me get those back out. There was a, a store that was having a sale on 60 bottle cases. And I have two 60 bottle cases, but they're kind of just the boring, generic, plain black ones. They're just black and then there's like a little piping around where the zipper goes. One I have is blue and the other one is pink. But I really like those and I had been looking for another one. And so I was like, well, let me go look at the, and then I looked at the price. Now I paid, I want to say 35-ish for both of mine. And this one was only $16.99 and it came with a bunch of other stuff. It wasn't just the case. There's like a lot of tools and things included, which I won't use, but I save that kind of stuff to give out and like my random acts of kindness and whatnot. Anything like that that I'm personally not going to use, I'll use it for that. So I ordered that. I also ordered a new... Uh, six placer steel multiplacer. I like the multiplacers that have the really thin edges and they're hard to find. The ones that you get from most of the places have the thicker edges and I don't like those. So whenever I can find these kind of thinner ones, I get them. And they had a six placer, which the last time I tried to order it, my order got canceled because they went out of stock before they could fill my order. So when I saw they were back in stock, I grabbed one of those. So counting that, my case, the tip, and the Medusa kit, plus all my storage boxes and stuff that I've, well, so the Medusa kit, my case, the tip, and then I've purchased new storage bags, the new dividers, the storage boxes that I bought at Hobby Lobby, um, to make myself all new kind of storage because I want to split it up. Um, I've only spent about $200 this year. Now, that does not include the, hmm, like probably almost $300, probably more like $250 um, from Craftably that were technically kits I purchased last year in December, but I won't be receiving them. I thought I would be getting them in March. I'm not even sure that I'm going to get them in March because every time I see a post from Craftably, stuff has been delayed. So, I mean, it's okay with me. I'll just get it when I get it, but I went ahead and put that information, those prices that I, you know, those kits and, and how much they cost in my budget. So, it looks like I've really spent more than I have, but you know, it's all technicalities. So anyway, um, and then today I just feel like I kind of went a little bit overboard. These are all sticking together and I don't like it. I'm gonna see if I can kind of smash some of these with another tray to get them to separate a little bit. I don't know why they're sticking together so much. I really do feel like these are resin drills. I've had so many that have holes in them and now they're sticking together like this, which is weird. Just kind of running my finger along the tray here to kind of get them to stick on the edge and then separate hopefully at least a little bit so I can at least get them close enough together to pick them up with my multi-placer. So, so yeah, I feel like my budget took a little bit of a beating today, but I'm super stoked to find a 60 bottle case for that cheap. 
Um, like I said, and it's one that's got a design on it. It's not one that's just like a boring black one. So yeah, excited about that. And I'm still debating what I want to do with the question that I asked you guys about the Chuck Pinson and shipping. And I know people are going to have a difference of opinion. Um, I don't want to leave out international people. I don't like doing that. And I said that. However, I mean, I want to, I guess for me, it's because this one, there's kind of a time limit on it. I mean, the event is coming up in March. And if I'm going to give it to someone, I would want them to have it in enough time that they could you know, get it and have it to work on it during the event. I mean, it doesn't do me any good if I send it to you after March and the event is over, right? I mean, there might be another chuck along, but that was my point in giving it away was that I wanted somebody to get it in enough time that they could participate in the event if they so chose. And, you know, I'd really prefer to give it to somebody who's planning on participating in the event since that was kind of the point. That being said, I don't know how much sense it makes for me to open it up to international people and then, you know, have to pay more than the cost of the kit to ship the items. Plus, you know, things changes things change so quickly. Like I haven't checked recently, but I know there have been several times over the last couple of months that, for instance, Australia has basically closed and you're not allowed to send anything through the mail in or out. So I wouldn't be able to ship it to some places in some instances anyway, internationally. So that's kind of yet another argument for making it U.S. only. Um, and, you know, I talked to my husband about, well, what if I, you know, one of his suggestions was having international people pay the shipping, which I hate to do because to me, then it feels like it's not a prize. You know what I mean? Like, did you really win it if you then have to pay for it? I mean, I know you're not paying for the kit, but still, that just feels wrong to me. And so then I was like, well, what if I just, you know, either bought someone the kid and had it shipped to them? I don't even know if I could do that. Plus then I'm paying for the kit again, which isn't what I wanted to do. And yeah, I mean, I just don't know that there's a good answer. Like I said, I don't, my intention is not to alienate people who our international subscribers, but I can't, you know, I mean, it's not like I'm mailing these out all the time and I get that, but yeah, I just don't feel like there's a good answer. I mean, I'm not happy with any of the solutions that I've come up with, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I think I'm going to ask I'm in a creators group that is full of people who are uh, outside the U.S. And I think what I'm going to do is ask them their opinions on what they would do. They are all diamond painters. And, you know, living outside the U.S., they, I mean, you guys, obviously, if you live outside the U.S., have a better handle than I do on, like, what fees are and, you know, what things cost for shipping and all that kind of stuff and what you're willing to kind of, I don't know, put up with or, you know, absorb or whatever or pay based on how, how much things cost. Um, so I think I'm going to ask them kind of what they think. And then maybe after that, I'll make a decision. So let me, okay, I finished that section. So let me move this a little bit so that you guys can see this section and I will work on this section. So 
So yeah, I just haven't come up with a good solution yet. And I really want to get it figured out because I am planning to do an event. I'm not going to give you guys all the details yet. Uh, I don't have all the details worked out yet for one thing. But I did want to mention that I am planning to do an event. It will be in tentatively from September 1st to November 30th because it's going to, I want to give people enough time to get whatever painting they choose to do for the event done. So I wanted to give everyone enough time for that. And, um, yeah, I still have some details to work out, but hopefully it will be a fun event. I am going to do prizes. And I think I'm going to have two different sets of prizes. Um, and so, yeah, just a heads up that I'm going to be doing something. Although I guess while I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning that and giving you guys a little teaser, uh, I could ask, like, what would be the sort of thing that you would want to see as prizes? You guys, I'm really leaning towards these are resin drills because I don't know if you can see this one here this one here and this one here and even this one all look like they're concave on the back like the the mold didn't get filled all the way and so and given that I've had some that had holes in the top it seems kind of crazy that a kit this inexpensive would have resin drills but what do I know I still haven't figured out a de you know, definitive way, even though people keep telling me there is one, that there's lots of ways to definitively determine whether it's resin or not. Nobody seems willing to offer up that information. I did actually have the thought, somebody mentioned that, uh, I think it was something I read. Resin is shinier, which was the reason that it was preferable to acrylic in the beginning. Now I think they're doing acrylic resin blends. So it's kind of both uh, because acrylic, of course, is tougher than resin. And so then I wondered, well, since acrylic is supposed to be tougher than resin, I wonder if I could like you could like try and scratch the top of it with like the tweezers and see if there's a difference in how you um, can scratch it. Like does the resin scratch more? Is it a deeper groove than you would get with the acrylic, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I still got some, still have some exploring to do as far as that's concerned, but, but I am working on it still. So I think that's the other thing that I've been, I feel like I'm just torn in six different directions lately. I need to just focus on one of these projects that I have going on and get it done. Like I want to go back and visit, revisit the resin versus acrylic issue. I'm working on kind of how you use rulers and I haven't quite finished that up yet. Um, I want to do another, another test with my glue dots and yeah, so I've just got some things like that, that I want to do my cost analysis that I've been doing, although that one's getting pretty close to being done. So I'll be sharing the results of that with you guys too. Um, so I just need to get like some of those projects out of the way so that I can concentrate on other things. I've got the chuck along coming up, so I'm going to need to open the chuck pinson that I'm planning to do for that one and get it kitted up and ready to go so that I'm ready to go for the event when it starts because I want to definitely have it kitted up and ready to go for March 1st so that I can just dive in when the event starts. So that means I need to do some of that kind of prep work beforehand. So there's that and so yeah I just feel like I'm being torn in a bunch of different directions I did 
I'm doing pretty good with most of my goals. Um, I've done two of the big tin canvases, so I feel like I'm pretty on track for those. I've started a third. So I feel like that's going pretty good. I feel like my diamond painting hours is going okay. Um, I'm behind, but you know, if I don't make that goal, at least I'm more aware of how much I'm diamond painting and I'm trying to do it more so that I can reach that goal. Um, I'm working towards you know, figuring out what I want to do for my own event. I wanted to do three events. I've already completed one, which was actually an unexpected one, which was the Alice event. So I finished the canvas for that, which is awesome. That one kind of hit a bunch of goals for me. I can use that one as my big 10, one of my big 10, because Diamond Art Club is one of those. Although I will you know, my, my Chuck Pinson is a Diamond Art Club, so I didn't have to do Alice for that, but whatever. Uh, I got another event in because I hadn't intended to participate in that when it just came up and I had that kit and I thought, oh, this is a good excuse. So I did that. And that's also going to count towards my hours. And it's another diamond painting out of my stash. So now my stash, I think... <laughs> is probably going to go the wrong direction, but we'll see. Um, I, you know, I added this one to my stash because I really wanted to do this one when I saw it. So, you know, there's that. Some of the other ones that I unboxed with this one have been sent to other people because I just decided at, you know, I would rather give this to someone else and let them have the enjoyment of diamond painting it. I've got enough other things on my plate that it would be forever before I got to this one anyway. So I'm okay letting it go to a new home. So I suppose there might be some people who say that I'm cheating by, you know, decreasing my stash by just giving paintings away. But whatever. It's my goal. I'll, I'll do it how I want. So... Because uh, like I said, I do intend to, I'm going to be doing a Chuck Pinson, the Diamond Art Club that I have that I want to do for myself, but I do intend to give the other one away, which means that one is going to disappear out of my stash, even though I didn't personally diamond paint it. And I'm okay with that. So, yeah, it's just however I want to do it, right? Okay, somewhere in here, there is an E. There it is. I don't know why I couldn't find it. But there it was. It's number one, which you would think would make it even easier to spot, but I think some of these have a little bit of static in them still. So... They're not cooperating sometimes to kind of go down where I want them to, but. And there aren't very many of these, so I'm, I mean, I don't have very many left, so I, I hope I'm not close to running out. I'm hoping this is a color that I'm really only going to find down here in the bottom. I see one or two up at the top, but that's all, so because these are the all the drills I have left of this color. So hopefully I'm going to have enough. Although I definitely need to, with some of these, get out another tray, like put them between two green trays and kind of smush them together because they're, I've got a lot of these where they're just kind of sticking together. And that makes it a little hard to pick them up and diamond paint with them. And that one right there has a hole in it. Okay, it'll be interesting to look at the trash when I get this one finished. Didn't see the hole in that one because it was facing the other way. Okay, I think that's all for this color. Let me straighten these up a little bit. 
And we'll put these back in here. Whoops. Those just went flying everywhere. That's not great. Okay, let me pick those up. Definitely don't want to lose them in case I don't have enough. I'll probably have some spares, but just in case. So, yeah, uh, I think I'm going to call that good for today, for today's whip and chat. Um, I, yeah, so I'm going to call that good. Let me get these back in here so I can get this put out of the way. Let me zoom out so that you guys can kind of see a little progress that I've made. So not a whole lot, but I did make some and I got some placed over here. So you can see kind of the beginning of the hill and some little like bare trees there. So yeah, make some good progress. Hopefully you guys had fun listening to me uh, blather on about whatever came out of my mouth. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, I think that's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you were working alongside, I hope you got some work done on yours. Well, I didn't get to tell you about my dreamer designs, but I will save that for next time because I have thoughts, but I will share those next time, uh, in the next whip and chat. Before you leave guys, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. Hit that subscribe button that helps me out even more and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads and as always guys thanks so much for watching